Our best case scenario is certainly to oppose this deal because this uh, deal that the Prime Minister has negotiated is worse than EU membership uh, because at least when we were members of the EU, we had some remnants of a say. Uh, Under this arrangement, we will have absolutely no say. And, of course, there are all sorts of consequences for Northern Ireland. So, first of all, we must oppose this deal. Uh, In terms of what happened next, uh, I think, uh, we, as you say, we have to remember we are the majority still. And actually, there have been one or two polls where Remain has taken the lead and the second referendum campaign has taken the lead. But the overall trend is that support for leave, for getting on with it, is actually increasing. And I think if there were to be another vote on this issue, we would win by an even bigger margin because I think so many people who initially voted to Remain are looking at this and disgust at how we're being treated by the European Union. The uh, government's under huge threat now. The uh, withdrawal agreement, as it's drafted, as Dominic Rabb said in his resignation, is a threat to the union. Uh, our confidence and supply partners are the DUP. Uh, they are obviously very concerned about... Uh, the union. Uh, We're at risk now of losing their support. Uh, They've made it clear that their support is for the Conservative Party, not Theresa May, but they're not there. Last night they didn't vote uh, with the government. Without their vote, we can get no legislation through. That means that we are heading for a general election, which is exactly what Jeremy Corbyn wants. Um, And perhaps in return for Labour support for uh, voting through the withdrawal bill, perhaps Theresa May is going to deliver Labour why, uh, why, a general election in the spring. Why does there have to be a general election if, I mean, if, if you can't get the DUP support? The DUP made it quite clear it's about Theresa May's withdrawal agreement that they're concerned. They'd, be, they'd give their support back to the Conservatives if they were delivering the Brexit they were promised as part of that confidence and supply agreement. Um, in which case, there doesn't have to be a general election, which you know perfectly well. No Conservative MP is going to vote for, which they'd have to do uh, to, um, to uh, overrule the fixed term parliament act in which case the issue is just simply getting another a another leader in, indeed but we need to do that we need to get to 48 letters and we need to push through the uh, the confidence uh, motion but without the dup support we have no majority in the house of commons that means no legislation can get through the house of commons on a vote and uh, that's the paralyzed government that's not going to go down well One of the things which probably should happen, I mean, Jeremy Corbyn has been breathing fury and saying, we must have an election, we must have an election. Well, why doesn't he uh, throw down the gauntlet and say, um, no version of no confidence, and then see where he stands? Um, that, that would uh, capture the mood, I think. And if the government is in a weak position, then it's an opportunity to show whether they can keep on governing. Would that not quite simply shore up the Tory uh, benches? Well, it, it might. It might. But, um, you know, all, all the focus is on Theresa May at the moment. But uh, Corbyn's getting off with very little scrutiny. Um, well, I'd say what's getting off with uh, quite a lot of scrutiny, though. Of course, this is Brexit withdrawal agreement. Now, the the, the jury you're sceptics say they won't vote for it. Labour Party uh, leadership is saying they won't vote for it. The DUP say they won't vote for it. Liberal Democrats won't vote for it, but I imagine for rather different reasons. Well, yeah, they are different reasons. And I think if she were to say, um, you know, put forward her proposals, but say subject to confirmation in a referendum, in a people's vote, um, you might be surprised with the number of people who would support it. Uh, is that uh, a suggestion you think uh, is being taken seriously well, in number just, 10? Uh, I'm, I don't know whether it is. Maybe they should think about it. Because instead of pandering to this very difficult group she has herself, she should perhaps be looking more widely. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to support it, but if, if they had the additional rider uh, of um, opening up this up to a, a popular vote, then I, I think it might get through Parliament. You see, but you, but you personally, your party, you wouldn't support it on, under any circumstances? Well, if it, if, it had a, if it was attached to a people's vote, I think we would certainly think about it. Ultimately, she's not the problem, Julia. Brexit is the problem. And all of the people who've been saying she should have done this, she should have done that, she's done a terrible job, they haven't actually brought forward a plan that could have been negotiated. Yes, they have. 
They haven't. They, they have haven't. Canada There's Plus, Plus, Plus. Uh, anything Canada is Plus better. It doesn't work and it doesn't give you, it doesn't protect the peace process in the border in Northern Ireland. So I think she's, look, she's done her best. Uh, it's clearly not good enough. It's not good enough for people on the Brexit side because, frankly, it's not Brexit. And it's not good enough for people like me because I'm basically saying, what is the point of doing this when you're, we're going to take a big hit? And Donald Tusk, I thought it was interesting, even he, even though they have absolutely routed the UK in the negotiations, he was honest enough to admit this is lose-lose. There are no winners in this. But the big loser, I don't care if it's Theresa May, the big loser is the United Kingdom and our future. So you're you're saying the only way to resolve this is to have another referendum. Well, look, let's let's go with two of the likely outcomes of that referendum. One, another close remain, uh, sorry, leave win. Two, another close remain win. How does that resolve anything? Well, I'm I mean, if, no, if, if, if not... remain if remain wins narrowly, even if that were the case, they're not going to win by sort of seventy percent, are they? If remain win narrowly, you know perfectly well there's no reason why leave voters should accept that. We'll have to go for best of best of three, then maybe best of no. five. And if leave win, people like you, you're still not going to accept the verdict. No, you're still going to say we're all I... ignorant, stupid, bigoted racists and didn't know what we were doing. Well, the first thing, Julia, let's have a serious argument. I've never, ever, ever said that about anybody. That's the first thing. So take that back and then we can continue. I've never said that and I don't believe that either. I understand why a lot of people voted leave. However, I, none of us know what would happen if there was a new referendum on the outcome of the negotiations. But I'll tell you what, we did some polling overnight, which I think is being published later today, and I think there is a big movement on this. I think the public are saying this now. And frankly, Julie, you should be saying this too, because this is so different to what was promised. Who do you think could actually lead us to a successful no-deal Brexit? Oh, I didn't know I was coming on mastermind. Um, <laughs> I, I would, uh, in terms of leading the country post-Brexit, because remember, that's a completely different question to what you said, but that's what Prime Ministers do. I think it needs to cut with the past. I think it needs fresh face, uh, not on my watch, Governor, all that sort of stuff, looking at the country, leading it forward. I think you're talking Sajid Javid, Ruth Davidson, because she said she yeah, doesn't want it. Which they're is, all, well, they're Ruth, all Ruth, you know, Ruth Davidson says she doesn't want it. It's political speak for I do. So you've got, you know, you, 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 I think you need a brand new fresh face. But actually, specifically now... God forbid Theresa May went under a bus, but if she did, in other words, sort this out right now, I'm, I, I, possibly Michael Gove, but uh, wow. but he's not, he's not your man to go and lead the country in, you know, a year or two's time into another world, which is really, frankly, what should happen. And I think, I, I am Mar Theresa May's stoicism. I am Mar her steadfastness. I think the nation has come to see that she's a very good quality public servant. I think her communication skills leave a lot to be desired. I think she, her leadership has not been brilliant, but the concept of giving a bat at the wicket and saying, I'm, you know, every morning that woman wakes up and someone pours another 47 kilotons of horse poo on her head, don't well, they? Well, yeah, and, but, and but, but, but she here. invites a lot of it. I'm sorry, I don't, I just don't accept this resiliency. The one area where she's shown no resilience whatsoever has been standing up to the EU. I've read the whole thing, 585 I, we pages. We saw your it, tweet, it, you it, with all your cups of coffee. Yes. It brightened up with some colourful co um, coffee mugs. But I think it boils down to this. What this agreement gives us is control back over our borders. What we have to give in return is a de facto permanent customs union, uh, both over the next 20 months whilst we have the transition and for the foreseeable future. And in fact, you can't get out of that arrangement without agreement from all sides. And that is why I think in the end, this may just struggle to pass Parliament. There is, I think, for the Prime Minister, the danger of both sides of the arguments and the Labour Party, Lib Dems and everyone else, voting against the deal and it not getting through Parliament. And, and, and is, is the answer, Grant, to get rid of the Prime Minister and start again on a Brexit deal? Or? Well, I, I, I certainly haven't put my letter in. I never, never did. I mean, I thought if this was going to be 
changed, if the Prime Minister was going to be changed, doing that a year ago when it could have made a difference to the negotiations was the time to do it. And this shouldn't be about the individual. It should be about the deal that's now on the table. So if people don't like the deal, they should vote against the deal. But I don't think putting in a letter and destabilising um, the, the government uh, at the moment with these sort of crucial last minute negotiations going on into the very flimsy only seven page future relationship, uh, I don't think this is the right time to do it. I have no idea whether they'll get 48 letters. If they do, I'm fairly confident that they will fail uh, and that she will survive it. I don't see how they're going to get 50% of the parliamentary party to uh, support them. Uh, and I've always thought this was just a sign of complete desperation on their part and incomprehensible behaviour. Why incomprehensible? Because it's not going to make any difference. They blame the Prime Minister for the outcome of the negotiations whereas the outcome of negotiations were almost inevitable from the day they started. Uh, we've got a deal which is undoubtedly a poor deal in the sense that it is a second-rate relationship to remaining in the EU, uh, but that was the sort of deal we were always likely to get. So I found it somewhat extraordinary that the Secretary of State should say that he didn't know how the negotiations were proceeding and about to be concluded. In fact, I find it almost unbelievable. But, but you seem to think uh, that that's a fault of the Brexit secretary as opposed to the prime minister who's excluding the person from doing their job. I, I have no doubt that as this crisis has deepened over a two-year period, uh, Number 10 Downing Street and the prime minister have taken more and more power to the centre in, in trying to keep control of what has turned into a rather uncontrollable and dismal process. No doubt about that at all. But that said, if you're signed up in government and you're in the cabinet, then you are going to be, you are, normally I would expect you to be able to share the documents and to know the direction of travel of this negotiation. I find it impossible to believe that the secretaries of state for Dexu, whether it was uh, David Davis or Dominic Raab, were not aware of the sort of direction in which this negotiation was going. This latest news in the last couple of moments that uh, all the Tory whips have been told to return to Westminster immediately uh, might suggest that something is afoot and that those 48 letters have now gone in. Um, absolutely. I mean, I've um, had so many people, you know, the last few weeks telling me that um, they've had enough, um, our Prime Minister must go. But very interestingly, yesterday um, I had a conversation over the phone with a current government minister who said they've had enough and they're also putting a letter in. So, you know, when ministers start putting letters in, you know that, um, you know, um, it's time for it to go. Uh, well, I mean, this is uh, this is the issue, though, is it even if there are enough letters that go in, it's not guaranteed that she will lose a vote of no confidence. Or is it your view that, as many have been saying, that there are an awful lot who may not wish there to be a vote of no confidence, we don't want to precipitate it, but once it happens, given that the party rules, bizarrely, say that she uh, can't be challenged again in the next year, that they will want to take advantage of this one-time opportunity to oust her? Completely. I mean, um, back in July when I, with a couple of other colleagues, was working on trying to get letters in because, you know, we, this is straight after checkers when we thought this is a non-deal, you know, this is not checkers that um, the public voted for. We had a, a, sort of a list of people who's um, told us submitted it. We had the middle list of people who said they don't want to be the ones putting it in, but they will um, vote against her when it goes to vote no confidence. And then we had the others who, um, who said no or they were thinking about it. So I, I, I'd be very surprised if she won a vote of no confidence, in all honesty. If she did win a vote of no confidence, um, also it's worth bearing in mind that, you know, her deal will not pass through the House. You know, Labour have said, DUP have said. So I think she's a goner anyway um, in a, a position. 